it's Ellen. Happy Saturday. Happy Easter to everybody. Um, today we're going to be finishing this hutch and I apologize for the really awful glare from our garage windows but it's natural light and I, I can use that natural light with this today. Um, so we're going to finish this off. This hutch was just an old brown hutch. It had a little bit of damage so I had to do a little bit of wood fill, a little bit of re-sculpting of a just a little bit of the, the trim on it to make it look um, like it probably did in the beginning. Um, we're going to finish doing a little bit of waxing and highlighting on these drawers. You can see these and the cupboard. Put the hardware back on. And I've sort of done a bit of staging of the um, shelving in the hutch um, just to give you a little bit of a, an idea of how to actually um, stage your hutch. Uh, a lot of people just tend to throw their dishes and it's stacked up in big piles and it really doesn't look like much but these things can be a real piece of art and one thing I learned when I studied decor was that decor should be a conversation starter. So when someone comes into your house and they see your hutch and they immediately look at it, they don't wonder what's wrong or what's kind of off or why are your dishes all stacked to one side or those don't really match that or you know there's different things that go on in people's minds um, when they see decor that's a little bit off so but if they come in and they go oh that <clears throat> is beautiful where did you get that piece and that starts the conversation and literally you can talk about everything in your hutch, you can talk about who painted your hutch or where you got your hutch from if it's not painted. There's so many things that good decor uh, causes in a conversation. I mean, it can go on forever. Uh, I know a lady, we did her house uh, over the past year and she had a lot of antiques and we've incorporated some new, we've redone some of her antiques, we've painted her house. Um, now she says when, her, when people come into her house, um, they immediately say, oh my god, where did you get that? Oh, this is beautiful. <laughs> so that's what I mean about really nice decor. It should be a conversation starter and anybody can do decor. There are some principles to it and I'm going to teach you a few of those principles at the end today with this hutch. I don't know if I can get very good shots of the inside, but I'll try. I have to move the camera and jiggle it around, so I apologize in advance. But um, Thank you for joining me and if you're watching this on the replay, which a lot of you seem to be, um, that's fine too. Just tell me you're watching on the replay. If you have any questions, let me know. Um, my name is Ellen. I'm with Lundren's Interiors, which is my company. We do interior decor as well as furniture upcycling, which means taking old pieces that, you know, weren't very nice and redoing them so that they're a statement piece or um, a piece that you can be really proud of in your home. So I'm going to put my glasses on because otherwise it's hard for me to paint. But I want to show you what we're using today. So I am using a few different wax brushes. This is a wax brush that's really super fluffy. I use this for clear wax. Um, this is my black wax brush. So for each wax, you want to have a different brush. If you do this, you know, on a regular basis, you want to have all these different things. If you just do it like once and then never do it again, you could just use your, your cloth, um, put some on your paper towel or cloth and then smear it around. Um, this is my white wax brush, just a little bit smaller. And then this is my wax eraser. And a wax eraser is just a brush of clear wax because wax removes wax. Always remember that. So if you get wax on in the wrong spot, you don't like it, just take a little bit of clear wax, which I use um, just ordinary Varathane finishing wax as my clear wax. And I would just dip a little bit in, get it on my brush, and then I would put it over top of the wax that I want to remove if that was the case. So that's my eraser brush. And I'm going to use, whoop. Um, so I'm going to use some white wax today. Uh, this is Miss Mustard Seeds white wax. It's a really, um, it's nice for things like this. So where I had already done the blending and it wasn't exactly perfect where I wanted it, I can use white wax now and just finish it up. Um, I have some antiquing wax, which is also Miss Mustard Seed. I don't know if you can see that. Um, but it is 
very dark black. That might seem scary to people, and actually it was to me too. I was petrified of using black wax, but it's actually not that bad. This is my gold um, shimmer wax, which is the wax. It doesn't really look that great on camera, does it? Well, I don't know if you can see it better there. It's, it's called a Pueblo or Pueblo brand or something. Um, that is a highlight wax. So the highlight wax goes on details. If you look at the top up there, I've put a little bit up top on the um, crown of the doors. But I want to put some more here. You could see I put a little bit here. Uh, I want to put some on the drawers and on that other door. And the rest I think we'll leave alone. And then we're going to put the hardware back on. Um, so when I finished painting this whole piece, I took my buff pad and I this is just like a 600 grit, maybe even an 800. It's just a buffing sponge you get at the hardware store. I buffed the whole thing just to get any little uh, bits of dust that might have dried in the sand off. I don't sand to remove brush strokes or anything like that because basically I don't paint with brush strokes. If you use the right amount of paint at the right time, you won't have brush strokes. So that's really important. If you're getting brush strokes, you have too much paint on your brush at once. So I generally don't rarely have a brush stroke. But I do go around and get all the nubs off. My nose is running in the cold. Um, and then what I do is take a tiny little bit of this clear furniture polish on my um, buff pad, which you can get these anywhere. And I go around and I buff the whole thing. So it's just really buffing it back up to bring the shine back up. Normally this paint dries pretty matte, but this coal black paint actually dries really with a nice, nice like satin finish to it. So you don't have to do too much to it. So that was what I did in the meantime. I also took the back off. I was going to replace the whole thing. I considered painting it, but I wanted to keep these shelves this color because I think this is a classic uh, color for the shelving. But the back I took off and I did use the restore finish and I re, re, I guess you could call it like a glazing stain. It's not even really a stain. It's like a waxy, polishy, I don't know what it is. It says, it's restore a finish. You just rub it over top of your existing finish, your existing furniture. It comes in like eight different colors. And then you wipe it off and let it dry and then you buff it out. And that's what I did to the back. So if you can see, um, I'll open this up. The back is quite a lot darker brown now. And that's how I wanted it to be. So that will stay that way and I think it looks really nice. Um, when I took it off, I managed to tear some nails out, so I had to replace those, and it's all very on very tight. I mean, you don't want to have this go to somebody and not have it be um, tickety-boo. So I'm going to move this camera down to the floor, so I apologize for all the wiggling and jiggling, but I have to move the camera down to the floor so you can actually see what I'm doing. I'm hoping I don't roll backwards into my lamp and knock it over like I did earlier, so if I do and you hear a crash... That is what is going on, and I'm just gonna. I did some of the black wax, but I'll show you a little bit more. Um, I didn't quite finish down here, so I'm gonna go this way and I'm gonna turn around, move my table, and bring you guys down here. Okay, where are we here? Okay, I think that's. It's not the best light in here today, so I apologize, but I have to work on my lighting situation here. Um, maybe I can move a little tiny bit downward. Whoop, there, that's a little bit better. So this one I've done. I actually took black wax and went all around the edge, and I rubbed that in. And then I took a little bit of white wax and went around here. So this one is all completely done. Um, the only thing I would add to this now is a little bit of the gold. So with this one, let's start with this one, which is the uh, dark wax. So you just take a little bit on your, on your brush. Um, I like to dab it, dab it off a little bit onto my, I always wear an apron because I'm always dabbing, but anyway, 
That's why I always wear aprons. If anybody wants to sew me some aprons. So you just would take it and just gently uh, bring it into where you want it. So I want to make this a little bit more antique, just like that. And I want to make this bottom bit a little tiny bit darker. So you bring it in there. You can see it going on nicely. You do have to work this in. So right away, I can remove that piece that I don't really want there. And I'm going to bring some black wax in here as well. Really work it in. So it's a really moody looking bluey gray here. Now I'm going to take, oops, the tables are too close to me here. I'm going to take some white wax and you don't have to get this crazy with it. I mean, you can just paint your piece or you can just, um, you can paint your piece or you can just uh, use, use blending paint like we did before. However, I like the layered look of the paints, the blending and all of it together. So we're going to bring that out a little bit, bring it over here a little bit. Now, what I'm going to do is just blend it together a little. There's a little bit of white here that I don't like. I'm going to <clears throat> add a bit more black in there. Or maybe not. And if you get too much and you don't like how it looks, you just again wipe it all back. So I'm taking the black and I'm just going in the grooves a little bit just to get rid of some of that blue that I left inside the um, grooves from blending just slightly. Give it a little weight. I lost my brush. Okay, so make that all back. So that one is about done. I don't know if you can see that very well, but I think that looks pretty good. Now on the bottom here, Remember I had trouble blending in here and it was because I didn't uh, sand it enough. So this paint has to have scuff sand. So I obviously missed some right down in here and that's why it's showing up like that. I was going to re-sand it and redo it and then I thought no because I'll show you something else that <clears throat> in this particular case, um, something else that I think might actually work. So. Now we're going to go with the black wax again down in here. This already has a lot of dark there, so I just want to darken up here. And on this end, sort of want my ends to match a bit. Put it down into this groove. It's hard to see when I'm sitting like this. It's hard to really see where the, um, you know, it's hard to see exactly what I'm doing. Normally, if I do a piece like this and I'm really quite close to the uh, floor, I will sit on the floor. <laughs> it's a little bit easier. I think that looks pretty good. This is a little bit too bright, so I'm going to darken it a little bit which seems crazy because then I'll go over it with white wax. <laughs> um, okay, put a little bit of white wax in there just to highlight the places I do want. And this white wax is not going to cover that bit. But I'll show you why I'm not too worried about it. Normally, you would let this wax sit for a couple of minutes and then buff it off, but I don't want that much sitting on it. If I, if I did let it dry, I could take the clear wax and remove it all. So that's not bad. 
then I go back. It's going back and forth and back and forth. And this is kind of an advanced technique, but I just want to show you really how pretty you can make something, really, if you um, have a piece that you want to do. Okay. I wish we could have music going on with, with these because... Um, it would be really nice to have some music in the background, but apparently Facebook will take your post down if you have music going on in the background, which is kind of crazy, but that's the way they work. So, Okay, now, so what I want to do is add a little bit of this um, white wax over to this side because I feel like this side here whoop, is a little bit darker than that one. So I am going to take a little bit bigger brush and add some white into here. You can see how it just softens it up. Now this wax um, dries hard. In fact, you would have to take mineral spirits or something like that to get it off once it's dry because it just dries rock hard. It's not uh, like soft after it's gone through a drying period of about even an hour. Um, so if you did have to get it off, you would use mineral spirits probably or, or clear wax. And again, I'm struggling to see being down this low but I think that's about how I would want it. Let's see what that looks like. And if not I will fix it up after I'm on camera. It's really hard on camera to get things exact. Okay but you get the idea of the technique at least so that's good. Okay so that was pretty fast, I would say. Now for the um, gilding wax, which is the gold, uh, I just want to do a little bit on the top in here, just very lightly in, in these bits here. And again, I would probably be sitting on the floor being down this low to everything, but um, I can't do that on camera. So I'm just going to move it over a little bit. So you just you can use a brush, a really tiny um, paint brush. I have a few little artist brush that I use for this type of thing. You can use your finger, which is what I'm going to do. Um, it's creamy, like um, a little bit creamy or a little bit thicker than maybe face foundation. If you, it's, it's super creamy and a little bit goes a long way, trust me. So I just, I kind of have bigger fingers, so I have to be careful but I just want it on the tips. So you just rub it very gently where you want it on the tips. I need a little bit more. And it just adds like a really pretty um, antique look to it. I don't know if you can see all that. I'm gonna go down the side here and into here. don't want to use too much because you don't want it to look overcooked um, but you want to use enough that just when the light hits it it's very pretty sheen so I think that is about right if I'm seeing it properly Okay, what do you think of that? I think it's really pretty, but um, let's do this one now. And we'll do just a tiny, don't want to overdo this either. It's so easy to get too much of this on, really. But again, if you apply clear wax right away, you can remove any wax you want. You don't really have to worry too much about it. I mean, I, like I said, I have big fingers, uh, so I have to be careful how I smear this about, but... Okay. 
Okay, we'll keep going over here, do a little bit over here. Sometimes I try to use my pinky finger, but I swear my pinky finger has a mind of its own. It just kind of messes me right up. Okay, a little bit more in here, I think. You know, if if I if I wanted to also, I could bring it right down a little bit into the center, but I don't want to. I think that looks pretty. It's just kind of enough. Um, I'll show you what I mean about the wax remover. So this brush has a bit of clear wax on it, and I don't really want this gold right in here. I kind of overdid it a little bit. If I have enough of the wax on it, it should work. Hmm. See that? Takes it right out. So if I wanted to do that little bit there, I would just add more. When you do this when the gold is still fresh, it, it comes right off, and that's true for any of the waxes, actually. Okay, so we will carry on down to drawer number two. Not door number two, drawer number two. Keep going. And I'll just smear a little bit more in there. And under here. Just a tiny little hint. Um, and I want this because I think this is kind of a, a really pretty, like, furniture has its personality. This happens to be a Queen Anne replica, which is um, the Queen Anne style of furniture came out about the 1700s or 1720s, somewhere in there. Um, and it was kind of... Uh, it was kind of funny how furniture makers were designers. So Queen Anne furniture was sort of an in-your-face um, rebellion to the Gothic design of buildings and furniture. Gothic, if you've ever seen Gothic or Rococo, um, and if you don't know what that is, look it up, um, furnishings, they were really embellished, like super embellished. It was just... Um, almost gaudy really sharp sharp spires the the notre dame church that just burnt um was a gothic building and the gothic um buildings were designed and a lot of people don't realize this because when you see teens who are all dressed in goth and they think they're being rebellious the gothic uh, architecture was designed to reach up to god and the spires were really tall and pointed to reach up to God. And every Gothic building on the face of the earth has gargoyles. And even a lot of people think gargoyles are a really new age thing, but they're not. They're from the Gothic period. And gargoyles were used on every building, every Gothic building, to scare demons away. But I know a lot of young people think it's all new, and it isn't, so... <laughs> There you go, news for your kids, you can tell them. Okay, I will have to double, triple check when I'm done here to make sure that I have enough on each piece there. I think I do. Door. Um, what was I saying? Um, oh, so yeah, Queen Anne. The Queen Anne style of furniture was sort of a rebellion against the gaudiness of the gothic period and gaudiness as in g-a-w-d not god <laughs> himself um so it had much simpler lines it had um beautiful swirls but nothing was really uh tall nothing was really um super super ornate this is ornate enough this is this is very ornate actually compared to what we have now but compared to the gothic period that came right before this this is this is very simple so the queen anne furniture was um, a simpler design it was very ornate in a, in a really subdued way um, like this piece just about all queen anne um, 
Furniture has cabriole legs, which are an S-curved leg. So if you see a piece of furniture with an S-curved leg, um, it's a cabriole leg, which is really one of the classic features of the Queen Anne furniture. And of course, this piece is stamped in the back, made in China, so I know darn well it's not an original. <laughs> um, I'm thinking I should maybe try doing it here. What do you guys think? That would be nice, wouldn't it? Hmm. I just don't want it to be too much. I want it to be sort of simple, but pretty in a, in a simple way, I guess. So that's how it looks so far. So I'm going to switch sides. Um, I did put a little bit of, of um, I put a little bit of the gold on the hinges because I remember how I had left the hinges on and I painted them black. So I left that on the hinges and I apologize for, uh, I'm going to put this back up for a minute. Hi. Um, so that's the waxing. Um, it's really pretty simple, but it's really a beautiful effect, actually. So now I'm going to put on the hardware, and then we'll talk about styling the piece. So I'm going to switch sides again, and I'm going to put you back on the floor. And again, I really wish I had a camera person because, oh lordy, it's really hard for me to get all the features in that I want to. So, guys, check this out. This is so exciting, you have no idea. So, um, I need my screwdriver to open these doors. And again, nice trick if you have your door shut. I have gone and finished all of the doors and sides, so everything's really nicely done. There's a few things I still have to touch up. So these were spray painted. Remember, they were really dark brown. And they go in just like that. Now, isn't that pretty? I just love it. So pretty. And when we get to the bottom, you'll see why I'm not too concerned about that one spot, because literally, it's covered up by one of these. Okay. Um, I'm overdoing it. So I have a little handy dandy screw, electric screwdriver that I use for these, so it should go on pretty fast. I think that's just so pretty. I just want to sit here and stare at it because it's so pretty. <laughs> it just looks so dramatically different than um, it used to. I mean, it's just a night and day different. I'll post a before and after, after later, sometime later or tomorrow, probably later, um, because it's just such a difference and it's so pretty. This will go to somebody's home and hopefully they'll style it really well and it'll look pretty and it'll be a conversation piece just like it's supposed to be okay normally when i do drawers i take them out to put the hardware in but i can't do that now look so this still has this little bit of abnormality here with the black right here but if I put this on it literally covers it right over so that's why I wasn't worried before <laughs> about it and I think it's perfect these are just so pretty I know I keep saying pretty a lot I have to find another word stupendous lovely gorgeous to increase my vocabulary somehow. Uh, okay. All right. That's the last one of that. The 
this handle I had put on, and like I said, I spray painted these um, with the Rust-Oleum. I actually have it here. Excuse my reach across the beach. Um, it's the Rust-Oleum Gold Metallic. Love this stuff. Another one that I like for spray painting hardware is um, the hammered metal, the, the uh, Rust-Oleum hammered metal that's bronze. There's a black one. Oh, I just love the hammered metal look. It's just beautiful stuff. So there's lots of stuff out there if you look around for it and try to find it to fix things up. Okay, so again, I'm going to take this door out. And I'm going to put this last handle on. And then we'll talk about styling the inside a little bit. Um, these long candles like this, um, you want to line them up. I don't know if you can see what I'm doing here. Line them up as well as you can. Tighten them. Okay, and then, actually, you know what, I need my, my little short screwdriver for this. Okay, so... About right. Maybe a little crooked. Just adjust till you feel they're right. Tighten the nut on it or the bolt screw. Then these have, and I don't know where I put them, but these have two little tiny pinholes because this is called a handle a knob plate, this here, which is separate from this piece. Um, and because there's just one screw in the back, if this didn't have the pin nails in it, um, it would just turn every time you went to. It would eventually, you can see I can turn it already, right? So after I will put the little pin nails in, they go right in that hole in that hole. Just tap them in really gently. And then that is that. I'm gonna put it back up. Sorry. And you can maybe see it. Here, everything I do is jiggly with this tripod I have. Sorry, okay. So, um, this is not for a client, this piece is for sale. So, I have just done this to resell. So, uh, it would be nice if somebody <laughs> somebody out there wants a, a nice piece. But, uh, can you see the gold? I mean, doesn't it just look so pretty? I oh. Okay, let's find a different word for pretty. We have to use some <laughs> better synonyms here. But um, Okay, now I have a little bit of glare going on up here, and I'm really sorry I can't do anything about that. I, I have to find something to block out my, my windows now and then. Um, but what I want to show you is the inside, and I'm going to take the camera, um, and I have to sort of freehand this, so bear with me because it might get a little bit messy. Um, so let's go. Uh, let's start with down here. So if you had a china cabinet, uh, you would put a couple of your display plates or even one of your dinner plates. And, and if you had nice plates, I don't. I just have the cheap Costco stuff, which is fine for me since I've never owned china in my life. But um, you would put, you know, your plates on the plate reel in the back, and I'll show you that in a bit. And then down here is where all of your extra plates, um, cups and saucers, your dinner set would go, would be in these two cupboard doors. This would be for um, probably napkins or silverware, if you had a set of silverware you wanted to store. And whoops, this handle's not on here, okay. This also would be, this is a really deep drawer, so it could hold a lot of stuff. So basically you should be able to get like a set of china in there. Um, now, I'm going to take you up top here. Let's see. Um, okay. So I'm, excuse the junk in my garage. It's really messy out here. Okay, so I'm going to try and see what you're seeing, but I honestly can't because the camera's backwards to me. So, hopefully, let's see here. I'm going to use this free hand, so I apologize for any wiggling. So what I have done is each of these windows um, becomes a vignette. So 
this becomes a vignette and you can see I have, I don't know if you can see it without the glare, but I have a, a jug, a wine jug and some port glasses in there. I have a pretty little plate and tea, tea cup there. I have a candle holder and I used to have something in here. Where did it go? Um, anyway, I m might leave that empty or, you know, put something else in there. Um, up top here, I've got flowers because I want something to be a focal point. As soon as people look at this, I want something to really catch their eye. A little vase and I'm using the, the, the set of three or five, so threes, threes and fives work well for putting things together. None of these were bought together, but they go together and it looks really cute. Down here I've got some crystal. Um, so I, you know, use your shelves with some of your nicer pieces of things, whether you have uh, crystal or wine glasses or something. Uh, this is a little, you know, decorative plate. It's green, but it's very pretty. Um, so I've got some crystal there. This is where you would put your plates on this plate rail. So you might only want a couple of plates like I have here. I have a decorative plate there and a decorative plate there. Decorative plates generally are what you want on your plate rails. You don't want your ordinary dishes like that. So, um, I'm going to, sorry, take this down. And I'm actually going to move this one up because I think it looks prettier there. When I close my door, I want to make sure that I might I find my center. So my vase is off center. My plate is centered. So I need to move this vase over about two inches to center and move all of these things over. Okay. Now I can push that back a bit and pull these forward a bit. Like that. This is fine there like that. Okay. Now you could put wine in here, but if you put wine bottles in your cabinet, put it with something that's associated with wine. So I have a wine decanter there and a couple of these really nice wine glasses. Um, and again, if you look on the outside, each of these areas becomes a vignette. So it's hard to see, I know. There's a decanter there with glasses, some decorative uh, English rose, and a little flower vase, and then another decanter. Okay, so I'm going to put this crystal vase now back down here because I think it looks really pretty there. Now, you don't need to have three things lined up. You could have something that is you know, extends out more in here. So something, I don't know what you would want, maybe some really pretty mugs and a coffee pot or something that's really unique. Put unique things in your cabinet. So I've got this little tea set. Um, I also have a stack of dessert dishes. And it's perfectly fine to do that. But if you look at it all together, it looks pretty nice. And so someone coming into the house Um, should come into your home and see this in your uh, your dining room or your kitchen um, and really it should strike them as something very pretty it's not hard to decorate a unit like this if you if you even have to go to the thrift store and find some pieces a few of these things in here are actually thrift store or um, auction house uh, pieces that I picked up so I'm gonna put this back on the table finished look. So I hope you learned uh, some stuff about the um, glazing, uh, the um, blending, the staining, the waxing. Um, I think we've kind of covered everything pretty much on this video or this series of videos. There's three videos so if you didn't 
see the beginning, uh, the first two videos, go back and watch this because there's a little bit of, of base knowledge about how to paint these pieces. Painting these pieces is so fun. I mean, it's just, it's really fun. Um, I have a piece that I just got in that is pretty big <laughs> um, and it's it's got a lot of decorative woodwork on it that we'll be working on. Later today I have one more live to do, probably about five o'clock and it's a piece, it's a hall table that I did in black and stained the top wood and I need to put gold gilding wax on that so it's just going to be a really short video on the gold gilding wax on that one. So. I hope you all have a great Easter weekend. I have to go to the store now and get some groceries, but um, I will catch you later on today. Thanks for watching, guys.